Hi, I'm Rich Ochoa. This is my daughter, Leanna. Hello. Okay, so this is uh, what we did before. Wait, 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 look at the camera. I don't want to look at the camera. Yeah, you're going to be a star. I don't want to be a star. <laughs> That's what they all say. Cord. Dad. Cord. Get the cord. So we dry fitted this beforehand to make sure we had the proper size tiles, spacers, etc. And we're going to move left to right here and just do a very nice kitchen backsplash. Okay, how long is the tile? The tile is six inches and three inches tall. Okay, and we're going to cut the tile in half to start with uh, those two stagger yes, pieces. Yes, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what about the mess on the countertop, Leanna? Um, so I watched a YouTube video and they recommended we put some cardboard down on the countertops beforehand. So I've been hoarding cardboard. So let's go ahead and do that now. Wait a minute. We're making a how-to YouTube video and you're telling me that you're referencing other YouTube videos. Correct. I watched a how-to and we're making a how-to. Okay. <laughs> so if you watch the YouTube video on how to do this, why don't we just give people the link to that video instead of going through the trouble of making our own? Because theirs wasn't good enough. And we can monetize off of this one. Okay. <laughs> we can't monetize until we get a thousand subscribers. How do we solve that problem? Like and subscribe to this channel. Be sure to ring that bell so you get post notifications. <laughs> We're gonna use a tile saw to make our cuts. Got this one at Home Depot. If you're gonna do a big job, I recommend getting one of these. If you're going to do several jobs, you definitely want to get one of these. That water will keep the heat off the blade and reduce the dust. This moved a little sluggish because of all sorts of dried grout in the grooves. So we hit this with a little lube and now this slides nice and easy. So the finish side, of course, is going to go out to give you a nice finished look. Okay, Leanna, I'll need a, a drill bits. Here they are. No, they aren't. Okay. <laughs> Here they are. Better. <laughs> in? Yeah, in first. Okay, now pull. Just pull the thing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Okay, we're pulling all our electrical out and we'll be putting the tile underneath the outlets and the switches and then remounting. And you don't want to touch in there. That's what a dumbass would do. So the most important visual here is this line right here along the bottom. It's most visual to people who are in your kitchen. It's not quite as important to get this upper line exact. So we're going to start at the bottom where we can control it. And then instead of trying to fight everything to be exactly square, if there's a little bit of variance at the top, no problem. People generally don't see this because it's tucked underneath the cabinets. Yeah. Okay. Start spreading it on the wall. Put it on as thick as you want to be. Put it on as thick as you want. Shut up. <laughs> like really thick. I'm trying. <laughs> More. And is it okay if I get in on that? Oh yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Are you sure it's okay if I get in on that? Will it come yeah. off? Yeah, yeah, it'll come off. Like I said, almost anybody can do this. <laughs> Notice how my assistant is loading it up on the side and then working the way down from the side that she loaded it on. And now she's not doing that anymore. Good, Leanna. Right now, we're just trying to get a coat on the wall. We'll go about maybe three feet out and then we'll work with that.
Yep, you can just set those on just like that. Is it perfectly aligned to the tape? Yep. Okay, ready for the half one? Factory side. That's right. Out. Okay, try to look at the camera while you're doing this. <laughs> you got the spacers in there? I got one. Do I need two for this little guy? Yeah, yeah, put the other spacer flat. Yep, that looks perfect. Let's go, you're not getting paid I by need, the hour. I need more spacers. The thin set is coming out a little bit. Oh yeah. How's it going, Leanna? It's going well. How does it look? It looks fantastic. Okay, so we have a piece that's going to go right here, and I need to make a cut here, a cut here, and a cut right here. I'm going to use a little saw for this. I'm going to sit this tile on the table, and I'm going to hold it really tight. because it's going to be obscured and covered up by the by the uh, outlet, outlet cover outlet cover thank you <laughs> action when you're making these cuts here around your outlets and receptacles you want to ensure that you can see the screw hole so when you go to attach once you're completed you can still screw it in screw it into what the screw hole Leanna yeah. Did you want to show the mashed potato method? Leanna. Yeah. Did you want to show the mashed potato method? You need more grout. Don't even worry about putting it on this. It's not grout. Whatever. Fin set. set. Whatever. Fin set. set. Whatever. Fin, fin set. set. Well, that's a little much. That's better. Rolling. Okay, we did this, and then we did this, and then we moved over here and did this, and then we did the corner, and then from the corner we moved over here, and then we kept working all the way to this side, and now it's done, okay? Okay, we're pushing the grout into the seams now. You see we're using a darker grout, a charcoal gray, and we've done this section above the stove already. That's the finished look that we're going for. My assistant, Leanna, is working on this side, pressing the grout into the seams. And I've worked this side right here. You use a float tool to press the grout in. After about 15 minutes, you come by with a damp sponge. Not, not wet, not soaking wet. At the same time that you're removing the excess grout, you're also pushing the grout into the seams so that you fill up the valleys and you turn the crumbs into a nice smooth grout line. The bottom here and this top here underneath the window sill is hard to do reusing the little crumbledy bits that were, you know, left over from the majority of it. So it's better to get the fresh grout out of the barrel. And what's going on with this bucket right here? Why aren't we filling this up with water? We're filling the bucket up with water 
to do the wet sponge, the damp sponge, damp sponge along grouted bits. And why don't we just use the kitchen sink in the faucet and just rinse out all the old grout out of the sponge in this here sink. Then the sanded grout would be sitting in the pipes blocking the gray water. Yeah. And it would be gray because it's charcoal gray grout. It's a final step. We're taking the damp cloth and we're wiping the surfaces of the tile. We're not only getting the grout off the surface of the tile, but we're pushing the grout into the channels and making the last pass to make sure the grout lines are smooth. You don't have crumbs and bumps in those grout lines. Now is your last chance to discover and remedy the high thin set that may be poking through the grout lines. If you discover white bumps in your grout, that's probably the thin set from underneath where it's setting high. You take a needle nose pliers and you pop those little bumps out, making sure you don't electrocute yourself. And then you push new grout in and then you go back over with your wet cloth. What do you think, Leanna? That looks sick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> What else does it look? Dope. <laughs> what else? I don't know. I don't know any other new phrases. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Leanna's pulling the masking tape off. How does it look, Leanna? That looks sick, dog. As sweet as Caroline. <laughs>